So I started the Visual Studio 2019 and let's create a new project. So I'll click that and we are going to create ASP.NET Core web application. So let's select this option and just click next. So let's give the project a name and I'll just call this band API. And again, let's just click create. And here we are given few options. We can create an empty project or a project based on API template and we can choose different .NET Core versions. Now the version we want is 3.0, so make sure that you choose 3.0. And I'm going to choose an API template. We could start from empty, but API template allows us to use some of the dependencies that will be imported automatically for us. So that way we don't have to worry about them later and import them manually. So again, make sure that you choose ASP.NET Core 3.0 version and an API template. And I'm going to uncheck the configure for HTTPS because we're not going to use HTTPS. We are going to work with HTTP only. So now let's just create a project. So here the project has been created. So let's have a quick look what we have here. First of all, we already have a controllers folder and a weather forecast controller. This is a default that comes with the API template that we imported. But I'm actually going to just delete that. So select that and delete. We are not going to be using this class at all. And the same for the weather forecast.cs class down here. Let's just delete that one as well. But you can see that we have few dependencies here and we have the ASP.NET Core app and .NET Core app as well. So these were imported by default when we use the API template. So let's open our program.cs and have a quick look. So there's two methods in this class and just like any other c -sharp program, we start with the main method. And the main simply calls create host builder, which will set up our SQL server so we can work with the database. And you can see that it builds it and then runs it. And the create host builder is down here. That's the second method. This one simply creates the default builder and configures the default web host, which is going to call the use startup, which is the startup.cs class. So this basically configures the web server for us and calls the startup class. So let's open that one. And here we have two methods. One is configuration and one is configure. So in the configuration, we will set up the services that we will use later on in the app. So what we add here can be used then or injected into other pieces of code. And here we have one service so far, which is add controllers, which essentially sets up the project to be an MVC app. Before we could use services that add MVC, but this is for the older versions of .NET Core for 3.0 we use add controllers, which will also add the support for MVC. And in the configure method, we will use the services that we added in the configure services method. So, so far we have few of them here. Currently we are in the development and in that case, we want to use the developer exception page. So once the application is in production, the exception pages will not be visible. This is only when the app is in development. We also have the routing set up here because we need to route the requests to appropriate actions and controllers. This basically tells the app how the request is going to be routed. And then we have use endpoints, which uses the map controllers, which maps the action and controller name in the URI. Remember in the URL, we will set the name of the controller slash action. And this map controllers is what uh, sets up routing for this naming convention. 
Now keep in mind that everything in this method is being processed in the order it is coded. So the order of execution is important. For example, if we added authorization after the use endpoints, then the code would be first routed to the page before any authorization would take place. So this is just a quick look on what we have so far. And there's one thing I want to do here and show you. Let's right click on the project and go to properties. And let's go to the debug. And here we have the launch browser, but I'm going to disable that. That's because we are creating an API, so I don't want to launch a browser because we will be working with the postman instead. And here notice that we are in the development. So remember in the startup.cs, we have the use developer exception page if the environment is in development. So that will kick in if there's any exceptions. And I'm going to set the app URL to something I can remember easily. Let's say 65,000. So it's gonna be 65000. So all requests will go to localhost 65000. You can of course change it to anything you wish. So I'm going to save these settings. And next, let's import some NuGet packages.